it's hard for us to comprehend the seriousness of the disaster described in Psalm 74. God's temple, which had stood for almost 400 years as that meeting place between God and his people, was ruined. This is how the psalmist describes it. The enemy has destroyed everything in the sanctuary, verse 3. God's foes have roared in his meeting place, verse 4. They set his holy place on fire and profaned the dwelling place of his name, bringing it to the ground, verse 7. When Babylon sacked Solomon's temple and Jerusalem with it in 586 BC, it seemed as though God had forgotten his people. So what should we do when we feel the same way, forsaken by God? Well, four things that Psalm 74 teaches us to, in response to feelings of God forsakenness. Number one, repent. Now, Asaph only hints at Israel's blame for the temple's destruction. He says that Israel wasn't only reeling from outside invaders. He says this in verse 20, the dark places of the land were also full of the habitations of violence. So there are reasons to repent. Even Asaph hints at that. But Solomon, the architect of the temple that's just been destroyed, was explicit. In his prayer, his dedicatory prayer at the uh, temple, he said that God would cast out of his sight the house consecrated for his name if Israel laid hold on other gods and worshiped and served them, 2 Chronicles 7, verses 19 through 23. When God is right to be angry at his people, as the author says in verse 1, we must repent. So, repent, first of all. Number two, we should recall God's wondrous works when we feel like God has forsaken us. And the psalmist writes of this in verses 12 through 17. History proves that our opponents and those of Israel in Asaph's day um, are no match for God's power, right? Listen to verse 12. God, my king, is from of old, he easily brought Israel out of Egypt, as Asaph says in verses 12 through 15, and by his mere breath, he created heaven and earth, verses 16 and 17. We should never suspect that God's arm has somehow become weakened and less able to save us. So we should recall God's wondrous works when we feel that God has forsaken us. Number three, we should rally God to help. That's really the emphasis of the whole psalm, but it becomes explicit in verses 18 through 23. By faith, we call on God to fix our problems, even the ones we have created, even the ones we have caused by our own failures, our shortcomings. We can be bold, even in these instances, bold like Asaph when he says in verse 22, Arise, O God, defend your cause. Five times Asaph urges God to remember his people and not forget them. We should rally God to help when we fear that he has forsaken us. And number four, we should rest assured that God never forgets. It's not enough just to rally God uh, not knowing what he's going to do. He never forgets. We need to know that. Asaph calls on God to have regard for his covenant in verse 20. God in the covenant promises to be Israel's God. They pledge to be his faithful people, but God's people forget to be faithful. God, however, never forgets as he says in Isaiah 49, verse 15. He rebukes those he loves, and that's what Israel was feeling in the destruction of the temple. We feel it too. That's what Jesus says in Revelation 3, verse 19. But he never, as he says in Romans 11, verse 1, he never rejects his people whom he foreknew. Here's Psalm 74. A maskil of Asaph. O oh God, why do you cast us off forever? 
Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your heritage. Remember Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Direct your steps to the perpetual ruins. The enemy has destroyed everything in the sanctuary. Your foes have roared in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their own signs for signs. They were like those who swing axes in a forest of trees, and all its carved wood they broke down with hatchets and hammers. They set your sanctuary on fire. They profaned the dwelling place of your name, bringing it down to the ground. They said to themselves, we will utterly subdue them. They burned all the meeting places of God in the land. We do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet, and there is none among us who knows how long. How long, O God, is the foe to scoff? Is the enemy to revile your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the fold of your garment and destroy them. Yet God, my King, is from of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters on the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. You split open springs and brooks. You dried up ever-flowing streams. Yours is the day. Yours is also the night. You've established the heavenly lights and the sun. You've fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You've made summer and winter. Remember this, O Lord, how the enemy scoffs and a foolish people reviles your name. Do not deliver the soul of your dove to the wild beasts. Do not forget the life of your poor forever. Have regard for the covenant, for the dark places of the land are full of the habitations of violence. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, defend your cause. Remember how the foolish scoff at you all the day. Do not forget the clamor of your foes, the uproar of those who rise against you, which goes up continually.